Welcome to Caduceus Live. I'm your instructor, Professor Newton, and today we will be discussing the Drug Identifier Lab. You may fill the empty prescription bottles with end products of all class labs. You may also fill them with beans or the candy of your choice that are tablet shaped. Okay guys, let's get started. We have three sections. This is our generic section. This is our brand section. This is our IV section. Now let's get into some questions. What is the brand name of this medication? In our generic section, none of the prescription bottles are identified with brand names. In our brand section, all prescription bottles are identified with brand names. For example, Plavix is the brand name of this drug. In this section, the brand name is Zosin. The narcotic schedule of Xanax XR 0.5 milligrams is C4. The generic name is Alprazolam. The quantity size is 60 tablets. The NDC number is 0009-005707. And the manufacturer is Pfizer. Hello, my name is Alejandra Hernandez. I'm from Albuquerque, New Mexico. How can you tell whether the prescription bottle is brand or generic? Brand and generic prescription bottles are easy to differentiate. If it has two names on the prescription bottle, then that's one way to identify that it is a brand name drug. The brand names are always at the top. The generics, as you can see, are always at the bottom. Also, you can identify a brand name drug by the R with the circle around it, which represents the trademark. Hi there, my name's Greg Bentle from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Is the NDC number always located in two locations on the prescription bottle? The NDC number is always located in two locations on the prescription bottle. One, in the front where it's visible and always identified by NDC. The second, off to the side, where the barcode label is. The objectives are as follows. The student should be able to recognize and utilize the equipment associated with this lab. The student should be able to demonstrate the proper procedure required to fill tritrated medication into capsules using the punch method. The supplies are as follows. Ceramic or porcelain mortar and pestle, spatula, parchment paper, electronic scale optional, ointment slab, 20 empty gelatin capsules, gloves, amber prescription vial, 30 Tums, also referred to as calcium carbonate tablets, pill counting tray, blister pack, and one prescription label. The dress code is as follows, shoe covers, gown, mask, hair bouffant, eye protection optional, and gloves. Now that we've gathered all of our supplies and have the proper lab attire, let's now take a look at the correct manipulations. Let's get started with the placebo lab. First, you take the Tums and place them onto the pill counting tray. Notice the difference between the grinding process and pulverization process. This step may take several minutes, going back and forth between pulverization and grinding until you've reached a fine powder. 
Then you place the product onto the parchment paper and the glass ointment slab. Then you take your spatula and create a mountain in the center of the parchment paper. Then you take your first empty gelatin capsule, separate it, and use the punch method, picking up majority of your medication. You then must use the spatula to top off the larger half of the empty gelatin capsule. You then take the smaller half of the empty gelatin capsule and place on top of the larger half. Next, we'll grab our blister pack. Notice it has 31 doses on it. We'll insert them in the bottom left-hand corner of the blister pack. Always work in a vertical fashion. Remove the adhesive seal and enclose the capsules. Notice your blister pack has five doses. Also remember to place the label on the top right hand corner with the patient's information. And this concludes our placebo lab. Joshua Mays here from Phoenix, Arizona. Do you always count the tablets in increments of five? It's recommended that you always count tablets in increments of five. Counting in greater or lesser quantities may result in you losing your number count. Hi, I'm Brittany Snyder from Atlanta, Georgia. What is the difference between pulverizing and grinding? Pulverizing and grinding go hand in hand. Pulverizing is crushing the tablet, whereas grinding is simply grinding the tablet in a circular motion. When pulverizing, never bang the pestle against the tablet, for it may cause some of the product to spill out of the mortar. Hello, my name is Tommy Chang. I'm from Houston, Texas. When filling a capsule, which part of the capsule halves do we fill up? When filling the capsule, we always fill the larger half of the capsule. Never fill both halves of the capsules, for this may result in an inaccurate dosage. Hey, this is Tracy Wagner from Las Vegas, Nevada. Are blister packs the same as unit dose packaging? Blister packs are different from unit dose package. As you can see, our blister pack gives a quantity of up to 31 doses, whereas our unit dose packagings can be administered on an individual basis.